Okay, so video two, um, which we've now explained all the rules of transformations. We know how we know what they mean, and let's just see how they work on this kind of abstract graph here. So well, it's not really an abstract graph, like you can see, it's a cubic, but um, for us, it's abstract because we don't know what the equation is. Okay, all we know are these two coordinates here. So it says sketch the following graphs, clearly labeling the new locations of the points P and Q. So for number one. We've got an F of X minus two scenario, and we know that this is in the form of X plus A, isn't it? Except A is minus two, not plus two. So therefore, as opposed to moving to the left, like you did before, because remember, if you've got F of X plus a number, it will move to the left. We've got F of X minus a number. So if you'd like, you could write it as f of x minus a, this is a translation of a to the right and 0 up and down if a is positive, okay? So f of x minus 2 means everything is translated to the right by 2. So all I need to do is move my p coordinate, so we'll call that p dash, is now minus 1, 0. And then we've got Q, no change to the Y again. So Q dash, two is moved forward by another two. And we've still got the minus four. So everything has moved slightly to the right. And there's our new graph. Number two, this time we've got Y equals three F of two X. So let's think about this. Y equals, so for number 2, Y equals 3 F of 2X. Get the order right first, okay? So X transformations always happen first. So X transformations first. So in other words, anything which is inside the bracket, you need to deal with that first, all right? So we know that F of AX means a stretch by scale factor one over a in x direction. So therefore, all the x values are times by one over a. And in this case, just dealing with the f of two x, our a is two. So everything should be times by a half. So, so far, we would have, just dealing with them one at a time, p dash, the x value has been shrunk. Everything is narrowed in, okay? And our new Q dash is 1 and minus 4. So everything has shrunk. So if I was to compare it on here, everything has shrunk. And it looks kind of like that. So that point has moved over there. And that point has been moved there. Everything is squished in. But now we've got to deal with this 3 as well. Because remember what that 3 means? A f of x means times all the y values, so stretch all the y values by a, and here a is 3. So now all the y values need to times by 3. So our finished graph is going to be p dash, its x value is minus 3 over 2, and its y value was 0, so 0 times 3 is still 0. Whereas q, q dash, its x value is 1, but minus 4 times 3 is minus 12. So if I was to draw this, it looks kind of similar in my sketch, and that's why it's a sketch, and that's why the importance of these labels is kind of emphasized. But if I was to draw it on here, actually, q dash is going to be somewhere down here, isn't it? 1 minus 12 and p dash are minus 3 over 2. So uh, it's kind of half that way, isn't it? So actually, it's like this, but it's stretched down massively. OK. Uh, we've got number 3, which is our y equals minus f of x. And let's remember what that means then. It's a number outside the f. So therefore, it's an outside transformation. So it affects all the y values. All the y values have been times by minus 1. 
So minus f of x means a reflection in the x-axis, remember, because this is, acts like a mirror. So all of your y values that were positive are now negative, and all your ones that were negative are now positive. So our p dash, well, that was still at a y value of 0, so it's, it, ha, it ha, now has a y value of 0. But q dash still has its x value of 2, but its y value has been times by minus 1, so we've got 4. So actually the graph has um, flipped, so it looks like that. Okay? Number four, y equals f of minus a half x. So again, we've got an inside transformation. And we've got two things going on here, haven't we? We've got f of minus x first, which we know is a reflection in the y-axis. So at the moment, all of the x values have been times by minus 1, scale factor minus 1 over 1. And therefore, our p dash, its x value has been times by minus 1, so that's 3, 0. And our q dash is minus 2, minus 4. Nothing has changed to the y values yet. So we've got our shape, like so. But we've also got to deal with this a half. And remember our scale factor for f of ax is stretched by scale factor 1 over a. a in this case is a half. So therefore, our scale factor is 1 over a half, which is 2. Okay, so therefore all the x values are times by 2, and therefore it's become much wider. Okay, so now our finished graph has gone to q da, uh, p dash, sorry, is now 6, 0, and q dash is now minus 4, minus 4. Okay, so that's up. And down, um, like so. Okay. Right. Next is art pool. Let's look if we got this this time. So y equals f of x equals one over x. And remember, one over x is the graph that looks like that, like that. This should be tending towards zero. And we've got asymptotes at y equals zero and x equals zero. Okay. So if f of x equals one over x, let's see what we can do with our transformation rules again. So number one, remember the inside transformations happen first. So if I want to do f of x minus four plus one, Whatever's in that bracket replaces the x. So 1 over x minus 4 plus 1. That's our new equation. How do we draw it? Well, we've got f of x minus a first, which we agreed is a translation of a to the right and 0 up. Okay. So our new graph has become everything shifted to the right by 4. So now our asymptote, it's best to draw asymptotes first. That just makes it easier. Nothing's happened to the y values, so it's moved to the right by 4. Everything's also moved up by 1, by this plus 1. Remember, outside transformations last. So all the y values have been added 1 to them, or have had 1 added to them. And therefore, your asymptote has had 1 added to it, and your x asymptote is unchanged. So here is our new graph. Thing is, though, I need to label where this graph crosses the x-axis, OK? So how do I work that out? Well, here, y equals 0, doesn't it? y equals 0. I worked out the equation of the graph here. So if y equals 0, so 0 equals 1 over x minus 4 plus 1. Move the 1 over, that's minus 1, 
equals 1 over x minus 4. Bit of algebra, times times by x minus 4, and divide by minus 1 gives me minus 1, so x equals 3. So here, my coordinate is 3, 0. Okay? You must label your x and y intercepts. Uh, now we've got number 2 then. So minus 1 over x. Again, let's think about it. So this could be interpreted as f of minus x because this is 1 over minus x, which is minus 1 over x. Or it can be interpreted as minus f of x, which is minus 1 over x, which is the same thing. So in other words, let's think about it logically. That graph, if you reflect it in the x-axis, you are going to get, <coughs> it's all going to flip over this way, isn't it? So this is going to go that way. This is going to go that way, and this is going to go that way, and your asymptotes uh, of y equals 0 and x equals 0 are unchanged. Likewise, if you flip it that way, so reflect it in the y-axis, you're going to get exactly the same picture. Okay. Really important to label those asymptotes. Clearly. Okay. Uh, we've also got this graph of... It's now asking us to sketch y equals 1 over x plus 2. Just think about that. It just hasn't given us kind of this f rule, you know? But y equals 1 over x plus 2. Well, if f of x is 1 over x, if I want an x plus 2 on the bottom, well, surely that's just 1 over x plus 2 here, because what's ever in the bracket there replaces that x. And we know, we know our rules for that, don't we? We know that that is f of x plus a, which means move everything to the left by a, a translation of minus a zero. So my one over x graph, nothing happens to the y equals zero, but my x, uh, my x values have all been moved to the left by a. So now we've got x equals minus a as your asymptote. And there we go. We now have our last example, which is f of 2x. So if you have y equals f of 2x, we know again that's f of ax. So that's uh, stretched by scale factor 1 over a parallel to the x-axis, so in other words, all x-axis values have been halved, and therefore the graph is squished in. Squished in. It's not as obvious on this graph because of its tendency to infinity. Uh, and there we go. That's graph transformations in a nutshell.